Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding RF Connector Care. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical overview of how to properly inspect, clean, mate, and store radio frequency connectors. Torque wrenches are an important part of RF connector care. We'll provide a brief explanation of their use in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding Torque Wrenches, if you'd like more detailed information on this topic. Most radio frequency tests and measurements are made on signals that are conducted via connectorized cables rather than radiated over the air. The connectors used on these cables and accessories require special care and handling, and this becomes more critical as the frequency of the signals increases. RF connector care is important in part because many test and measurement issues are due to dirty, damaged, or improperly tightened connectors. Poorly maintained and or poorly installed connectors can also damage other connectors and devices with which they're mated. Furthermore, proper connector care can increase the useful life of a connector, and given the high cost of many RF connectors, this is often a significant concern. For these reasons, proper connector care is vital in radio frequency test and measurement applications. There are six fundamental aspects of RF connector care. These are inspection, gauging, cleaning, mating, torquing, and storage. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go step by step through each of these topics and explain how and why each of them contributes to proper RF connector care. Let's start with inspection. All RF connectors should be visually inspected before being used for the first time and on a regular basis. One common problem is the presence of dirt, dust, or metal particles in the connector body. These can often be removed by proper cleaning, which we'll discuss in just a few minutes. The connector should also be checked for any signs of damage, particularly damage to the relatively fragile center conductors. Concentricity that is, whether the center conductor is truly in the center of the connector, is also very important. These are the most common issues, although there are other manufacturing and use-related issues that can occur. Since RF connectors may be small and difficult to see unaided, magnification and sufficient lighting are recommended during inspection. And although it may be possible to physically mate them, damaged connectors should never be used. As mentioned earlier, aside from reliability issues, damaged connectors can also cause damage when mated to other connectors. Another aspect is gauging. Here, a special tool called a pin depth or connector gauge is used to measure the positions of the center contact pins and the dielectric surrounding them. These gauges may be analog, as shown here, or digital. Both kinds should be zeroed before use. It's also important to note that some gauges push on to the connector, but the thread-on or screw-on types tend to be more accurate. Gauging should be done before a connector is used for the first time, especially when using lower-cost connectors. There are two possible issues that gauging can detect. The first is if the pin is too short. This is called recession or gap fit. In this case, connector performance may be reduced due to reflections, etc., but the connector may still be usable for some applications. The more serious case is when the pin is too long, also referred to as protrusion or an interference fit. In this case, the connector should be discarded. Although too long of a pin may also affect performance, the more serious concern comes from the higher probability of damaging mated connectors. RF connectors should also be regularly cleaned in order to remove any dust, dirt, oils, and foreign particles, especially metal. Most often this is done using a cotton swab and isopropyl alcohol, although compressed air or nitrogen can also be used for cleaning. Both the connector threads as well as the inside surfaces of the connector, should be gently cleaned. Note that only a small amount of alcohol is needed, 
The swab should not be soaked or saturated. After cleaning is complete, be sure to verify that no cotton remains anywhere in or on the connector. Next we'll discuss mating. The first step in mating connectors is to align them properly. Ensure that the centers of both conductors lie along a common axis or are in a straight line. Then gently push the connectors towards each other until they touch or come in contact. The next step is initial tightening. When tightening RF connectors, it's very important to only turn the coupling nut, not the cables, adapters, connectors, etc. Especially when mating connectorized cables, it's often necessary to hold one connector end steady while the other connector's coupling nut is being turned. This initial connection should be made hand or finger tight, that is, without excessive force. Note that if any unexpected resistance is felt, the connectors should be separated and inspected before trying again. As with all other aspects of connector care, avoid using force on RF connectors. Torquing is the final step in the mating process, and this is performed using a special torque wrench. RF connectors should never be turned using a normal wrench. The non-rotating side can however be held stationary with a normal wrench, as shown here, or it can be held steady by hand while the torque wrench is turned. Whenever using a torque wrench, ensure that it has the appropriate torque limit in newton meters or pound inches for the given connector. Even when using a torque wrench, care should still be taken not to over torque the connectors. The connector should only be tightened until the wrench starts to break. We won't go into detail on torque wrenches in this presentation, so please see the separate presentation, Understanding Torque Wrenches, if you'd like to learn more about torque wrenches and how to use them. The final aspect we'll discuss is storage. Between uses, RF connectors and adapters should always be stored either with dust caps or in storage tubes. Connectors should never be stored loosely together. In particular, special care should be taken with calibration standards, and these should always be stored in their original boxes or cases. Storing them in this way also helps to avoid getting them mixed up with other connectors. Let's end with a brief summary. The connectors used in radio frequency applications require special care in handling. This is because proper or improper RF connections can both affect measurement results as well as affect a connector's reliability and useful life. In this presentation, we briefly covered the six most important aspects of RF connector care, namely inspection, gauging, cleaning, mating, torquing, and storage. Properly following these procedures helps to ensure reliable, repeatable measurements and also extends connector life and avoids damage. This concludes our presentation, Understanding RF Connector Care. If you're interested in learning more about RF connector care or other related test and measurement topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.